Welcome to Networking Star, the podcast where we explore the journeys and strategies of successful entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Jeffrey Boyle, and today we're going to talk about some business connections, innovation, and growth, and how you can get more clients all year round. Today, I'm joined by Kat Arapis. Kat helps coaches and entrepreneurs get unlimited leads and clients. Nice to have you, Kat. So excited to be here and jam all things business and client generating activities and yeah, journeys and stories. I love it. Thanks for having me. So you, we were talking a little bit about your journey of what you have done. You were kind of, you were kind of put into this situation by accident, right? You Mm -hmm. you give us a little bit of explanation of how you started to help clients get more and more clients. Yeah. So Jeffrey and I are talking before we hit record here, but Um, I always tell people that I stumbled into entrepreneurship and my coaching consulting business that I've been running here from the Caribbean of Mexico for the last like six years. And how it started was my background beforehand is like I have my expertise and my years of experience in business. And I decided I wanted to move to Mexico. I'm from Canada. And long story short, I just like did not want to work in the economy. I wanted to like keep keep my, you know, certain level of things operating how I wanted them to operate. And I applied to a bunch of like CMO positions, like chief marketing officer. Op- oh my God, I cannot talk. Chief marketing operating officer. I cannot talk right now. I think I had too much coffee. Um, CMO, CFO positions. And obviously none of those really panned out. That's why I'm here. Did a lot of interviews, but not a lot of next level or next steps. And so for me, I thought it, it was, again, like I was saying, I was looking backwards. This was not like really well thought out or planned. Um, but I was like, okay, well, let's just like keep leveraging my skill. Like something, I had a lot of trust. I was just like, let's keep leveraging my skill. And I'll tell you how I did that. Um, but something will work out. Like I just knew something would work out. Like I just really trusted that like my, the abundance of talents and gifts and knowledge and experience that I bring to the table is valuable and someone will want to pay money for it. So I just kind of kept helping people, local businesses here for free. Then one business ended up paying me for the mark, I don't even remember even specifically marketing work that I was doing for them. And that's when I had the light bulb of like, okay, well, maybe this is it. I can just like cut out the middleman. I don't need to work for a corporation or a company. I'm producing all the value anyway, right? I just have to figure out how to get leads into my business, right? So I was like, if one person can pay me, one person wants to pay me, then more people will. And then that started my journey of, I called myself back then six years ago, a business strategist, a business consultant. And then I've picked up training and modalities all along the way. I'm certified up to the master and trainer level in various renegade wellness modalities. And so I just bring all of this with the work that I do with my clients. So I'm a master coach and a business strategist. And here we are, long story short. <laughs> so you, uh, you say that you're in the Caribbean. What part of Mexico are you? So I'm based, um, I'm based in Playa del Carmen. So some people know it, some people don't, but it's smack dab literally right in the middle of Cancun and Tulum. Yeah, it's a wonderful place. We went on vacation there and actually interesting enough, my son, my 10 year old son said to me the other day, dad, I think it's time that we go back to that resort. So I was like, all right. Wow. Well, so if, good here. I love it. It's we home. we spent, um, we, we recently moved back from Costa Rica and the idea of being a digital nomad, we were there for more than a year with our kids and they learned Spanish and they went to school with different local kids and, and kids from all over the world. And today, more than ever, it is possible to, possible to be a digital nomad, to be able to take your experience. A lot of people were displaced because of COVID and it's mm-hmm. really opened up a brand new world where uh, the, the idea of having to be in an office uh, is, isn't the way that it used to be. So how do you give us a, a little bit of an idea of how it is that you can help a person get endless clients and leads? Yeah. So what I do with my clients is I'm all about simplifying and mastering what actually creates clients, right? So there's, there's a few concepts, obviously, right? Like there is like the, the level of thinking that you have to have as an entrepreneur that actually creates that like never ending cycle of clients, right? It really is like, how are you approaching the day to day of your business, right? So what I find like on just like on a fundamental level, when it comes to like, like people's state of mind and state of being as entrepreneurs, is they get very um, short minded or short visioned, right? They're really just thinking six weeks out, eight weeks out at a time. And they think that way also with their goals. And they kind of get very like, I call it chihuahua energy, right? Just like very frantic, very urgent, very hustly, very like, Ah, uh, energy, right? And what you have to do is you have to think at least 24 months out, right? So that helps you really create clients in a calm way, right? Where you realize that, okay, so at the time of recording, that's for everybody listening, it's Tuesday, May 30th, right? 
And so it's about realizing like on a fundamental mindset level that the work that you're doing today, the client generating activities that you're doing today, yes, it creates the client today. And that client might not sign on the dotted line today. They might not pay an invoice today, right? But everything you're doing is creating a client today, but it's also creating a client that's going to be booking that consult call with you in December, 2024, or like buying your course in July, 2025, right? Like you have to really think long term and, and not get so like chihuahua -y. So like, that's like the first step, right? Just like how you're approaching your business. And then like on a strategic practical sense, it's, it's, it's the basics that people know this, right? Like it's not rocket science. Like when you think of like, how does Walmart create customers? How does like, or how do you as a consumer? Like you just like, you know, something exists, you know what that business offers. And then you just like, Go get the thing. Like it, it really is quite simple. We just overthink it and overcomplicate it. So right? a new business, a lot of times they, they don't have the, uh, I mean, Walmart's one of the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. Uh, they're in Mexico. They have Walmarts and then Walmart owns different stores that are in there. So they have this giant budget. How is it that you can get a new, a new entrepreneur to start changing that mindset of, of just this frenetic way of making money up front and keep a, keep the doors open while they think long-term. So that does like, this is a thing. It's like some people will have like an easier time holding that like state of mind, that state of being. And for some people, like you need to like actually just change the circumstances because you just don't have the skill level yet of like managing and like stewarding your mind, your emotions and your energy at a really high level. Right. So that might mean like you might like if, if you tend to get really frantic and urgent and like thinking only like you know a few weeks out or a couple months out like what can you do on a circumstantial level to calm down for some of them it might mean like yeah like maybe you need to get like a side gig like something to keep yourself calm to not be so like frantic about your goals frantic about like how you show up to your business Right. Gotcha. Like that would, you know what I mean? Like, I think so many, I'm not that business coach. That's like, you know, you have to quit your job to quote unquote prove to the universe that you're serious. I think that's like the worst business advice ever. Like you have full permission guys to like take care of your nervous system as you're building and scaling your business. Yeah, there's nothing uh, like desperation to be able to, you know, clients can smell desperation mm -hmm. and not only do they uh, either not want to do business with you or do business with you at such a cost that you're, it's impossible for you to make money with them. Uh, and so what's one of the, the most important steps that you would take in addition to, of course, thinking long term? Give me an example of one of your clients that you're able to help them switch this mindset and, and the results that it's given them. Well, like if you're if you're already like working on the mindset piece and you're like just really being calm and thinking further out your business and thinking about the long term of your business, right? Like as in also like this year actually doesn't matter too much because this year is actually setting me up for next year. Like that's what I'm saying, like really thinking in a long term calm way. From there, the most important thing that you can do, guys, and this is going to be something that you're always going to be thinking about at every level in your business. And it really is about like how many more connections and relationships can you make with people like that really is like the name of the game when it comes to especially because we're not selling pens on ebay right we're most of you listening to this right we're running client-based businesses it's a really human a people-centered and humanity driven business and so for me i'm like okay you just want to get in i always think about this two ways that i think about this one i'm always thinking like at every level of my business right this isn't just for like beginners at every level, I'm always thinking, okay, how can I get in front of more people? How can I get in front of more people, right? Because I also think about this in terms of there's people out there that have no idea I exist, but need to know I exist. Like that's how, that's my inner urgency to get in front of these people, right? For them, like for their goals. Like they have no, like they don't know I exist. They need to know I exist because if they knew I existed, then they could get this result better and faster than how they're doing it right now. And right? you, you've got to be the ultimate example of that. So you're in Playa del Carmen. Yeah. Uh, you've been there for six years. Mm -hmm. uh, you started off just trying to make a living. And then it turned into, you're explaining that you would give uh, even some local international businesses there. Uh, some of your service was for free and it just blossomed into another business. I think a lot of entrepreneurs will say, well, uh, either I, I can't get in front of people or I don't have the budget to think long term. So, you know, how is it that you started? Because you you can't just go to a local chamber meeting uh, right. there in Playa del Carmen and, and get business. 
how is it that you continually stay in and what's your your objective then over the next year to continually get in front of more people all the yeah. way from Playa del Carmen? I love this because, you know, at the time of you asking this, Jeffrey, you're, you're actually asking me and my business at a time where we're actually adding in like another pillar of our business, which is like the paid ads front. But I want everybody to be listening to know that like I've spent the last six years running and growing a really incredibly thriving business, which is organic, right? So I just want everybody to kind of know that like you don't need to be running paid ads at any level, like they're just a great add on. But um, what I will say is exactly that. It's like, yeah, you're not Walmart, but you don't need to be Walmart, right? Like exactly what, we were ta- what I just mentioned is like, we are a uh, people-centered, humanity-driven, like it's a bit type of business model, right? And so like grassroots really works well, right? Like if you are able to really connect with people on a genuine level, you win them over, right? In the, in the, I'm saying win them over in the best of ways, right? So for me, that looked like um, a lot of the people that first became my clients was because I gave sp- speaking event things. Like I was like teaching people how to like do content marketing, how to like get super clear on like their client or customer avatar. And at that point, I was helping all sorts of businesses. I wasn't niched down to just coaches and service-based business owners. I help those people now because at this point in my business, they're the easiest, most natural person for me to work with. Just makes sense. Um, but before I was helping all business owners, right? So it's all about like, where can I get in front of the people and give the value to the people? That was, again, this is me connecting the dots backwards, right? But that's literally what I did. I was like, where are the people already? I'm not going to worry about bringing the people to me, which is what a lot of people do in their businesses is like, they're trying to grow audiences, go viral on TikTok, right? And it's like, or if you want to click clients really quickly, go to where they are already. Like, so give me an example of of one of the ways of doing that. And once again, I think you're the perfect example of someone who can explain that. It's the same thing too. When we were in Costa Rica, uh, we were there for long enough. Um, you know, we bought a place on the beach there. We loved it so much, Mm -hmm. which is an amazing, amazing lifestyle. Um, and as we've moved back here, I found that I'm doing almost exactly the same thing here as I did in Costa Rica, right? Is that most, I live in uh, Boise, Idaho. And almost all of our clients are outside of Boise, Idaho. And so explain to me then some of those steps that you do. You talked about doing speaking events. Uh, they must be online speaking events. But what do you do then personally to get in front of clients for people to see the value that you produce for them? Yeah. So like on the one hand, like when I was starting out, right, because again, like, and I want really everyone to like hear this, especially if you're in that, those foundational years is like the people in your audience, like those are the people that still have that like old identity of you, whatever that was, right? Like for me, it was like someone that worked in corporate finance and whatever, whatever, right? Like now you're calling yourself a business strategist and a coach, what? And so like they need time to get on board, like the people that are already in your sphere, right? So in the beginning, yeah, it does look like going out. Like, and what I did was like, in I went into like in person, like I gave in-person talks, right? At like business groups or whatever it is, right? And at the same time, I was focused on building my audience. You have to do both guys, right? But don't expect your audience that like literally saw your spaghetti noodles last week to suddenly like hire you as a professional, right? Like you have to give them time to get on board, right? Um, So that's what I would say about that. And then like, as it is right now, like none of my clients are from Mexico, like they're from all over the world. And that's because I just get in front of where they're at. So I have an audience now, but I also am always thinking of like, how can I get in front of other people's audience? So that could be Facebook groups, that could be podcast interviews, um, doing guest trainings and other people's programs, right? And really just, it always, always boils down to that exact same thing, getting the value in front of the people. And so I don't agree how that's, that's, that's super it. helpful. You. Uh, It is easier now than ever before to be able to get a worldwide clientele. I had somebody reach out to me the other day and said, uh, where, in what state of the United States do you have most of your clients? Uh, Oh, we we don't. It's the English speaking world. And now we're even expanding into Spanish speaking world to be able to do it. But you can do it from almost anywhere. You've said we enough times that you must have people on your staff. How is it that you run a staff from Mexico uh, and, and to be able to create this worldwide, it sounds to me with clients all over the world, how do you create this worldwide enterprise uh, when it's you from Playa del Carmen? Yeah, I think it's like, you know, it's actually interesting because I've worked with a few clients that aren't from English speaking countries 
And actually a lot of them have come to me with this belief of like something about like these barriers to becoming like an international coach. It's very interesting because like I never, and maybe it's the privilege of, you know, being born where I'm from, but like, I really just, I never even thought about like not being international. Like it was just never in my, my head. So like, for me, because I'm online and I'm just doing the things that I know actually creates clients, like literally they just come from all over the place. Like, you know, they just like come from all over the place. It's just, it's because it's just never a question in my mind. What's the, and, and I think that comes down to another thing that you said, which is value. What's the number one mistake when creating value, these different coaches that you help, what's the number one mistake that they make in this value creation process? Okay, this is so good because I actually did a podcast interview yesterday and very similar like question. And I, I want to give this answer, which is like, the again, it comes from like how you're approaching the work, right? Which is like what makes it actually like on the other side be received in a resonant and compelling way for your clients. So for me, I find a lot of people approach, let's say content creation, like you're writing it, you're making an email or a reel or whatever it is. And they approach with a state of mind of like, I'm creating content versus I'm creating clients. They, they approach it with a state of mind of I'm doing a content creating activity versus a client generating activity, right? I, if you guys want to test me on this, I want you to go and do this. Like, I want you to notice the difference of the literal words that'll come out of your mouth when you approach this piece of content with a client generating focus versus a content generating focus. So many people just have it on their to-do list of like, make a reel today. And they are, but again, they're thinking about that in that way instead of like thinking about it in a way of like a result. Like, how will this create a client today? Right? Because this is what I'm saying. People just end up producing a bunch of content and they're just like on the content creation hamster wheel without a, without not a lot of results to show for it. Right? And that's why, because they're just creating content because they think that content creates clients, but it doesn't. So basically you're just talking to the mind shift. Content is king now. It's interesting. We have a content creation engine that we're about to release and it's powered by, it's powered by AI, but it, we teach it to, to uh, write. Uh, it, it's it, similar to chat. GPT has been trained with trillions of different uh, bytes of information Uh if you have the ability to personally train your AI to talk like you, it's very powerful. And as we train it, what's really great about it, it's not a matter of just spitting out information. It's about training it to write the way that I would write, which is going specifically to provide a value uh, for our clients. And that content creation is such a difficult process for most people. And, you know, even creating reels is a lot of work for most people, especially if they have to write it themselves. What's really been great about training it is it really focuses us, focuses us in on specific training. Mm-hmm. And I, that's why I like what you're saying is, is that if you train it to provide this specific value, now it's very purposeful. Rather than just putting in a, a prompt to chat GPT and getting content, now it's very specific training. So it will each and every day provide you valuable content. What has been uh, for you, I think, the the most rewarding thing in working for some of your clients? Because they must, whenever a client comes to you, it's because they're frustrated or they're in need of something. What is the most specific, uh, just I would say, joy that you have had with a client and helping them overcome one of their biggest challenges? Jeffrey, I think this is like my favorite podcast question ever. (laughs) And I've been doing these interviews for like years. No, this is so good because it's like, okay, as a business coach and you know, I help my clients make hundred K on repeat and yada, yada, yada. Like, okay, I could tell you these money wins. Sure. Like when you asked me literally what came to my mind was like, I, I, I literally picture my clients celebrating with me, but really with the celebration and it could be financial, could be internal, whatever it is, but it's like, it's, it's seeing them realize that they were always capable of so much more than even they thought they were capable of, even that I thought they were capable of, right? Like for me, the most meaningful, like profound moments in my times with my clients is like watching them realize that they just blew their own minds. Like that is everything. Like that is so good for me. That just like is everything. So yeah, that's well, what it has I to be very that. rewarding for you then as you've gone through this process that where you started off just trying to get a CMO position, which you know, there's yeah. some wonderful high paying CMO uh, positions, yeah. 
where you have essentially gone into a value creator for value creators with what you're doing. Uh, yeah. To me, I think that that's one of the most exciting things too, is when you see, uh, I have five kids and oh. uh, my wife and I have been married for 25 years. And the most rewarding thing is seeing those kids become better than you in different areas, seeing them honor their spouse, seeing them, uh, you know, go off and, uh, as they, they grow up. So I've got kids from 23 to 10 mm -hmm. and it's the same thing. I think with a lot of the clients or the, a lot of the people that you work with is to see them be better than you ever imagined them or better than they thought they could ever achieve. And there's a lot of, a lot of uh, satisfaction that cat tell, tell everybody where to find you. And, uh, and on, on Instagram, I know you've got Instagram. I know you've got a website to tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah. Okay. So if you are a social kind of person, um, definitely Instagram is where I hang out the most. So my handle is at Catarapis, cat with the K. So K A T A R A P, like Peter, I S, like Susan. Got to kind of spell that out for the people. Um, and then I also I have a podcast called Simplify to Scale, where I go obviously in depth on the simplifying to scale and growing your business. And then I also have a free course I would love to give your people. I'd breaks down what I talk about all the time with my clients. Um, you can find that on my website. So catarapis.com slash never ending clients, all one word. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. We're going to, we're going to put a cycle of never ending clients all up in your business. So join well, us. I'll let you have the last word on this. Give, give your 60 second, what you want to help people achieve and uh, why it's, why it's so valuable for them. Yeah. So what I want to help, like, again, above and beyond the money, what I want to help people achieve is really realizing that what they are capable of is so much more than even they thought that they were capable of. Like that is everything. It's like really reaching your fullest potential and realizing, oh, my fullest potential is actually two out of 10 and not a 10 out of 10. Like it's just, you just realize greater and greater capacities and capabilities blowing your own mind. So that's what I want to help people do. It's just like, I want them to blow their own minds all the time and they're working in their lives. So, yeah. Well, you're doing it from a really miserable location. I'm sorry that you're in such a bad place. The food <laughs> there, there's some wonderful restaurants right there in Playa del Carmen, but it's a wonderful place. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jeffrey.